to 10 feet and north and easterly swell. On Friday, weather becomes mostly is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's Wednesday, February 16, 2022, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, the Hilton finds a new partner, find out about a leadership initiative at Queen's College, a golden girl writes a new book, and find out what's on Crystal's plate. So let's start the morning off right. to you by We Buy You Sell Company, your leading hurricane impact windows, doors, and tile specialist. Find your joy and share it with others. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. You know, I'm joyful this morning. Glad to have my little sis back this morning, yes, LaDawn. Yes. Everybody knows me. I'm Charles Fisher. Welcome back, LaDawn. Yes, you look dapper this morning. Thank Quite you. Thank dapper. you so much. I'm yeah, so happy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, if I might yeah. see you... <laughs> Walk into the newsroom this uh, morning, all my back teeth was in my ear, and I just was smiling ear to ear. I mm -hmm. hope you're doing well. I'm doing hope well. the family is doing well. Glad doing to have well. you back. I know yes. your viewers are happy to see LaDon back yeah. as well. A lot of persons out there were asking me, when is LaDon coming back? When is LaDon well, coming I'm back? back? When well, LaDon is everybody. back, and she's full of energy <laughs> and ready to go at yeah. it again. Also, ready to go at it again this morning is our Crystal Darling. I'm oh, so Crystal. lucky to have all the ladies with me this morning. Crystal <laughs> Darling is out there on the street with our traffic update. Good morning, Crystal. 
Good morning, Fisher, and welcome back, LaDawn. We're here on the intersection of Elizabeth Avenue and Shirley Street, where traffic is starting to pick up for a rather busy Wednesday morning. And this morning, I'm here with Officer Patrick Kemp. Um, Officer Kemp, could you tell us um, what are some advice for motorists in this Shirley Street, Bay Street area? Uh, good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Bombers. Um, the advice I would give to the persons, especially traveling in this area, is to stay within the speed limit. The inner city is 25 miles per hour, and um, parking in this area is is a concern, especially for the, um, the police officers in this area and, and, and other business owners. So I want to say to those persons out there, when you're parking, especially in this area, be mindful, be respectful of poison of persons are uh, reserved parking, and when you park, don't cause any hindrance, obstructions to the flow of traffic. And we know that this is also an area that people tend to um, have. We have a lot of pedestrians. Could you you have any advice for pedestrians in this area? Oh, you know what? Pedestrians on the whole, please be mindful that when you are about to cross the street, to look both ways before crossing the street. Um, it's, it's incumbent on you to make sure that you do that for your safety first of all. You know, I had an experience just coming here this morning. A person just suddenly jumped out in, the, in the front of my vehicle. And of course, I had to maneuver to avoid that person. And that was a scary, that's a scary thing. You know, you don't want to be uh, somebody that would have been a cause or involved in an accident and a concern to pedestrians. So I want to say to pedestrians, so that please uh, exercise safety, look both ways before crossing the street and utilize the, set, the, the sidewalks. A lot of places I'm concerned, you know, you have the sidewalk and they still choose to walk on the street, even exercising. I want to say to you persons out there, please exercise good judgment and common sense. And lastly, we're in front of Princess Margaret Hospital. We know that there are a lot of um, emergency vehicles in this area. The police headquarters is right up the road. Good. What's a reminder for motorists to pay attention to emergency vehicles? Well, when it, when, especially when it concerns uh, emergency vehicles, please, when you hear the siren and, and and you realize that the emergency vehicle that's uh, making a way uh, near you, please pull to the side of the street. It's very important. Poisons still refuse to pull to the side of the street. All right, that emergency vehicle could be going to a destination where it could be, cons where it may be concerned your relative or friend, and we're trying to get uh, there to save their lives. So please pull to the side of the street. Oh, and I, and I have to say this, Crystal, if you're on a traffic light, an emergency vehicle is approaching from behind, it's okay at that point if the light is on red to exercise caution first of all and uh, and uh, clear that light. You have to because the emergency vehicle has to get through to get to their various destinations. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Awesome reminder, Officer Kemp. Back to you in the studio, Fisher and Ladon. Good points this morning. 72 degrees, that's what we are waking up to. Mostly cloudy, winds east at 16 miles per hour, humidity 73%. Now, a stationary front is weakening across the southeast Bahamas, while strong high pressure is supporting strong winds and hazardous seas transitioning throughout the archipelago. For all areas, weather partly to mostly cloudy, cool and windy, with quick passing showers mainly near the frontal boundary. Your daytime high temperature, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, overnight low of 6. As for Thursday, expect some showers late in the day, winds subsiding, 81 in the day, 69 at night, and then on Friday those showers will get out of here, nice with plenty of sunshine, 82 in the day, 70 at night. After decades as a staple on Bay Street, the historic British Colonial Hilton officially closed its doors on Tuesday, making more than 100 employees redundant. Still, it may not be the end of the road for the property, as Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, the Honorable Chester Cooper, says the owners, China Construction America, have found a new partner. There has to be some renovations to the property. Uh, we are advised that the property will close for renovations. We hope that this will be a short period of time. We hope that the staff will be absorbed into the other properties that's owned by CCA, the same developer that owns the Hilton. The Hilton's closure not an automatic blow to the labor force. Now, according to Director of Labor Robert Farkerson, more opportunities have become available following a recent job fair by Sandals. 86 people were hired on the spot, and I can tell you there was an additional 18 people that they did um, 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 interviewers for. 
Later this month, Agriculture Minister the Honorable Clay Sweeting will lead a high-level de delegation rather to the World Leadership Panel on Food Security. Discussions at the forum will focus on the ongoing plight of food shortage. Minister Sweeting and his team were invited by the United Arab Emirates, and they are hoping the trip not only strengthens ties between the countries, but improves local agriculture. We missed a generation, or possibly two, and we're looking at engaging our young persons and finding new ways where they're able to not just get engaged in the agricultural sector, but become successful farmers. 168 young Bahamians are the newest participants of the Mandatory Workforce Preparatory Program Cohort 19, facilitated by the National Training Agency. The program, which provides youngsters a second chance at learning and developing job readiness skills, is sponsored by the government as a means to develop an educated workforce and decrease unemployment. The government of the Bahamas has invested $500 in each of you. It sounds very little, maybe to you, but look at the state that our country is in. Financially, we're trying to keep our heads above water. And the government has decided that this is important. You are important. With no permanent address to call home, a seemingly growing number of people are becoming homeless, a troubling picture the government is seeking to turn around. Minister of Social Services and Urban Development, the Honorable Obi Wolchcombe, is leading the fight in declaring a war on poverty and is committed to eliminating it. So many have been living on the streets, living in cars, sleeping on beaches, sleeping under the bridge, sleeping in places where you would never want yourself or your parents or your sister or your brother, anyone you know to be sleeping in. The reality is it's gotten there. And this level of poverty, many of us never thought would have in our country. But it's here. And it's been caused by numerous situations. But whatever it is, we're not going to look back. The rearview mirror is not in our picture. We're looking forward. 22 new cases of COVID-19 reported in the Ministry of Health's latest release, 15 here in New Providence, three over in Grand Bahama, and one apiece in Eleuther, Exuma, Andros, and Long Island. The cases are evenly split between male and female. Hospitalizations remain at 42, with three in the intensive care unit. There are 119 new recoveries. 6,436 cases are still active. Bahamas group of companies is celebrating women in technology. We're taking this opportunity to pause and highlight the leading ladies in information, communication, and technology who are breaking stereotypes and shattering glass ceilings. We hope you'll join us in honoring the tremendous girl power that keeps our community connected. Day was celebrated on Monday and come tomorrow. It's all about Galentine's vibes, a night with queens. And this morning to talk more about this interactive virtual experience via Zoom is organizer Zemi Stewart. Zemi, welcome to the morning edition. Thank you. Good morning, Bahamas. Well, Zemi, if I'm not mistaken, Galentine's is usually celebrated the day before Valentine's, but you're doing something a bit different this year. Talk to us about the event. Yes, yeah, so Galentine's Day is normally the 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, but we, you know, honor couples and we decided to leave the weekend of Valentine's Day sacred. Also, we were competing with the Super Bowl. And so we decided to delay our celebrations a little bit and, and celebrate as a group on the 17th. And how did this event, I guess, all get started? Well, um, about four, well, yeah, four years ago, I started Wife Her Ministry, which stands for Wife Healed, Empowered, Restored. We're a community of women 
across all marital statuses and who seek to do just that to become her healed empowered restored and so Galentine's Day is just a way for us to celebrate friendship, sisterhood, community, to have a lighthearted event where you get to meet people of like mind, um, usually faith-based women. So it's a great opportunity to interact with women from all walks of life. When it's virtual, it, you know, it takes it to another level. We have women from the U.S., Canada, all over the Caribbean who are going to be in the room on Thursday. So it's a great opportunity to meet some women who think like you but may not, ne may not necessarily be in the same location as you. And how effective can you say this event has been over the years? Well, our first one was right before the pandemic, literally like February, and it was amazing. Guests had a great time. We had, you know, a lot of um, different um, social media ex experts in social media. We had health. We had um, th our therapists on, on site. We had a massage. Um, so that was excellent. You know, we love to be able to create great experiences for women. Virtual last year was amazing as well. We had Anastasia Palacios. So during our empowerment segment, live performances. And this year, same thing. So we decided to take it up a notch. We have Miss Chantelle O'Brien, our Miss Bahamas Universe, our Miss Universe. Um, as Bahamians who, you know, is coming to talk about her story um, and also to demonstrate her silk walk and judge a little competition. We have live performances again and empowerment segments. So I'm just looking forward to it. We do our best. I put so much time and attention into cre curating and creating experiences that people are going to be remember for a long, 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 long time. And how important can you say it is for women to celebrate uh, their female friendships? incredibly important especially as we age and and grow up it is so difficult to maintain adult relationships we have so many things competing with our time not just family but social media work um, and so it's really important to invest in your friendships to do things that help you to bond to celebrate each other and just to have fun and also to meet new people i feel like a lot of people you know that we get stuck in a rut and we don't expand our horizons but it's really good as well to meet new women um, and have interactions with other women because there's always opportunities to glean and grow and so we facilitate that Demi Stewart, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition and all the best to you and your team on your event tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And keeping staff motivated in the midst of the ever-changing educational environment due to COVID-19 has led to a new initiative put in place at Queens College. A visit to the campus recently saw teachers, administrators, and support staff in T-shirts with the bold lettering educational superstars keeping comments ablaze. School Vice Principal Sean Turnquest explains what it's all about. And that pretty much sums up what it is that we do here at Queens College. Teachers, support staff, even a student can wear this shirt. And the principal presented us with this idea as we were preparing to pivot and return to campus uh, for our hybrid education. And we embraced it and everyone is so motivated by it because it speaks to our mission and our statement of purpose. Turnquest also offered words of encouragement to students who recently wrote national examinations to all children throughout the Bahamas who, though faced with challenges, tried their very best, studied, went to the examinations, and may gave their best effort. So I'd like to congratulate all of them and to congratulate our teachers again throughout the length and breadth of our country. One of the country's most decorated track and field athlete and golden girl, Pauline Davis Thompson, has decided to tell her life story. It's about 334 pages and it's, it's 12 chapters. The chapter kind of talk about my beginning. It talk about me going up against Goliath. I try not to want to reveal too much. I kind of want persons to pick up the book and read the book. It's a, it's, it, it's, it's a good read. The book took about a decade to complete from just an idea to completion. I kept trying to write the book myself, but I kept getting so emotional about it. It just was such so difficult for me to do. God placed an awesome person in my path, and that's my ghostwriter, Canadian Jeff Todd. And him and I were friends for a little minute, and then I just thought, I just approached him about it. I was like, Jeff, listen, I'm writing this book and I need help and I want you to be my ghostwriter. I was just so blessed that, that he, he, he agreed. 
and that's kind of how it all got started. And what was the reason behind the book? I am hoping to inspire the future generation of Bayman athletes and those that aren't even born yet to, to go to greatness, to put on our fly colors. Not giving too much details, she reveals a dark chapter in her life. After I would have lost a daughter in childbirth and actually died twice in delivery, the doctor told me that they had nothing to they had nothing to be saved in my life. That was divine intervention because I was already I was dead. Just coming through that was just excruciatingly difficult. You know, as a young girl in Baintown, I wasn't expected to be much of anything. And I used to hear some of the coaches at the track say when Coach Rizzo would talk about I'm gonna become this real phenomenal athlete and how gifted and talented I was. You know, they would say, Oh, the only thing they're gonna do is have six or seven ch children for six or seven different men. Just to hear them talk about me in that derogatory term, to think that that's all I was going to amount to is become a mattress for men, which is um, overwhelming as, as, as a young, young athlete. Pauline getting two major endorsements on her book. Lenny Kravitz, uh, boy, I, I, I just feel so blessed. I remember the first time I met him was years ago. I read that endorsement like everyone else that he first saw me at the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. I was a high schooler at that time. He said his Bahamian grandfather took him there for him to watch me and the, the other Bahamian athlete. Rural Athletics also making a major contribution. Lord Sebastian Cole wrote my forward and that Rural Athletics has endorsed my book. And another thing, Rural Athletics has purchased 450 books that they're gifting to Minister of Education for Bahamian students. That should be a good read. And she also says she was approached mm -hmm. by someone, she don't want to say now, that wants to make a movie of her upbringing to Olympic That's and so World inspiring. Champions. And then she won the silver, the silver and the gold the at the Olympics. The silver and the gold, uh, won mm -hmm. the gold after Marion Jones was okay. stripped of the medal. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2000, the girls won the four by one. I, I am not going to say my age, but I was right there, <laughs> right there to watch that live in person, right there in Australia. And every time I um, talk to Pauline, I, I mm. get a learning, a learning lesson. And I, I think she needs to do some tours around schools and speak mm. to young ladies and young men and just motivate them. And I think she'll she'll be a good ambassador for the did, did she say how long it took for her to actually get the book in motion, or she it was just periodically a, a long started. time? She stop, start, stop, mm. start. It was so emotional. Mm. Then she had to find someone to help her with the book. Mm. You know, she was busy with other things, but glad it is out now. I'm encouraging Bayman's everybody go out there and get your copy as soon as it's available. So you're going to get your copy? I'm going to get my copy. All right. I'm going to get my copy. I sit down and read that. <laughs> and as we head to the break, we take a look back at the day in Bahamian history. On February 16th, 1899, long serving newspaper editor and parliamentarian Etienne Depute was born. Also on this day in 2000, Sabathita Fines equaled her indoor national track and field record in the women's 60 meters running 7.01 seconds in Madrid, Spain. Direct Talk with your host David G goes on the road live in the Turks and Caicos Islands as we celebrate our heritage and culture. Two countries, one people, one chain of islands. Direct Talk live from the Turks and Caicos Islands, partially sponsored by Bahamas Air. Accurate, timely information. Official indicators of national progress. Balanced discussion on government policy. A weekly account of government achievements. Your government in action. Airing Monday, February 21st at 6 p.m. on ZNS TV 13. A production of Bahamas Information Services. Linking people and government.
Welcome back to the Morning Edition. I'm here on Bennett's Hill at Fort Fincastle. And this morning, I'm here with the director of the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums Corporation, Dr. Christopher Curry. Um, so I understand you have some very excited news about the restoration of the water tower here. Yeah, last week, week we met with uh, the Permanent Secretary for Works, Lester, uh, th- sorry, Luther Smith, and we are working towards actually getting the uh, water tower reopened. Uh, of course, there's considerable amount of restoration work that has to be done, but this is an iconic site. This is like uh, to Nassau what the Eiffel Tower is to Paris or what, of course, the Statue of Liberty is to New York. So we want to make sure that this is going to be restored fully and operational, and we want to do it in a timely fashion because we want our visitors and Bahamians to enjoy the wonderful experience of the highest landmark, really, in New Providence. Uh, of course, we know that Gladstone Road has some height and elevation. Of course, Bahamar is a hotel has some elevation, but this is 126 feet above sea level at the top of the tower. Okay, and you mentioned that this is like the Eiffel Tower of New Providence, um, out of the Bahamas, really. Uh, is it, what's the history of this? What is the importance of uh, the water tower here? Well, it was built in the 1920s uh, during, you know, the, the Roaring Twenties in the Bahamas. This was the age of, of prohibition and rum running. And so it was a spectacular monument at that time. And it actually functioned as sort of like a lighthouse. We know we have the lighthouse of Paradise Island, but because of this elevation and there was lighting at the top, it actually was a beacon uh, drawing ships into the harbor. It also actually stored water and for a while it provided water so Supply for the hospital uh, below where you actually filmed earlier today. So this is an excellent site. Now we don't provide water for the hospital anymore but it's still considered the water tower and again it provides probably the most amazing view you'll ever get being able to see both the harbor side and of course the western side and the south side of New Providence from the top. Okay thank you so much for that Dr. Curry. Now I also have here with me Miss Raquel Davis who's going to give us just a little brief um uh, just a little brief talk about the opening of Fort Fincastle that we're expecting. Could you just tell us a little bit about that? A pleasant good morning, Bahamas. My name is Raquel Davis, Senior Museum Attendant at Antiquities, Monuments and Museum Corporation. And it's my privilege and pleasure to speak with you today and let you know a little bit about our historic site, Fort Fincastle. Fort Fincastle was built 1793 under the governorship of John Murray. He was the last royal governor of New York and Virginia and it was built to shape like an old paddle wheel steamer. The fort was built in anticipation of a French invasion but saw no action. But come, come Bahamas, mark your calendars, save the date. March 1st, 2022 is the official opening of Fort Fing Castle. We are ready to serve all. Natives, residents and visitors. The Antiquities, Monuments and Museum Corporation is the historic preservation agency of the Bahamas and we would love to share the history of our country, of our historic sites with the world. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Davis. Thank you, Dr. Curry. We'll be back. Public Service Announcement is brought to you by the Communications Section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training in conjunction with this channel. When students return to school campuses on January 24, 2022, primary schools will be divided into two groups, Aquamarine and Black. Students in Group Aquamarine will attend school for face-to-face instruction on Mondays and Wednesdays and Group Black on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On the three remaining weekdays, students will remain at home and complete their assignments set by their teacher using the Learning Management System, LMS, or hard copy packets. Fridays will be Intervention and Enrichment Day for selected students to attend the school for face-to-face instruction. For further information, contact your child's school or their Facebook page.
Well, Fisher, I don't know about you, but I'm sure getting hungry. Wicked Wings is a small Bahamian food business that has steadily been growing since its inception in 2020. And our Crystal Darling speaks with the owner about how he got his business off the ground during one of the hardest economic eras or eras in recent history. We were able to come together and put together a nice menu, nice recipes that we thought Bahamians would like. That's entrepreneur Nathaniel Adams, owner of Wicked Wings, who says after being fired at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic two years ago, he was left searching for a way to provide for his family. How is it that I'm going to, you know, pay bills, keep my kids in school, support my family, support my wife? Like, what, what is it that I'm going to do? In that time being emotional, of not being able to provide, that was the time when it was like, you know, these different flavors start to kind of upload to my, to my palate. And it was like, I just need to get this. So I was like in the kitchen, 3 a.m. in the morning, just trying to fry one wing to get the flavor that I, I already tasted in my, my, in my mouth. Adam's home-based business has a full staff, all family members, and it must be doing something right, having pulled in hundreds of social media followers. In January, it was featured in the Office of the Prime Minister's weekly press briefing. Still, Adams will tell you getting to this point was no easy feat. There were days when literally I ran home with $15. We had one order. And I got that $15, and then I say, well, thank God, because at least I'm able to go to the food store, buy one five pound bag of rice, some tuna, and some corn, and at least the family would have something to eat, you know. And, you know, sometimes people feel funny to share these kind of stuff, but the reality is that was the reality for many Bahamians, you know. And so to fast forward to this year, this time, to be able to say, you know, the business is doing well enough that we say, hey, look, like, we can't do this on our own way to hire you know, some other family members um, to, to kind of assist us um, to make the dream happen. So uh, I, I would safely say, ultimately, God is good. Adam says the ultimate goal is to make the brand an international franchise. For now, he's working on owning Wicked Wings food trucks and bottling his homegrown wing sauces. The flavors themselves are grown right in our yard. You know, and so that, that makes me feel good to, to be able to say that. And also that even the names of the flavors like sweet waters, you know, and splexy are all Bahamian expressions, you know, that we that we that we use on a regular and I will I will not stop until I pull up to a drive through in Florida and the person asks me, Well, welcome to Wicked Wings, how can I help you? And I'll say, This is the CEO. You all give me something in the back there. I don't agree. Michelle, you saw a cry, baby, sour lime wings, biggity wings. What's going on? That's it's, I think it's too, uh, even though I like chicken and fries and curry early in the morning, mm -hmm. it's too, too early for that right now. But, but we, 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 we really missed you here at the, I, at, I at the morning so edition. So yeah. we brought you some gifts. I don't want you to give them away now. These are some roses, some mm, chocolate thank you. roses. <sighs> Welcome back. We missed you. And we're also giving you a, a, a box of chocolate. So <sighs> if you didn't have a good Valentine, we're making sure that your Galentine Day yeah. is much better. I'm sure I'm going to have a great time. No sure about that. I hear, I hear Cleo and Agatha and Cindy and those already asking for one. Yeah. Those are and for Randy. you. They had their own already. Randy oh, they had theirs already. Yeah, okay. Randy don't deserve any. Mm. Randy does not deserve guys. any. Oh, but yeah. be sure to stay tuned into the ZNS Network for news as it happened. TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7. Welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back. Welcome so back. back. Welcome sure. back. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Have I'm a great good morning, morning everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Let's Chat with Tanya Lightborn. 
Today, my guest is Melinda Maynard. Melinda S. Bacchus Maynard, okay? Very I just want important. you guys to know that she said that was very important to her. So I dotted all of my I's Thank and you. crossed all of Cheers. my T's <laughs> just for you. Um, I am super excited to welcome a foodie, an attorney at law, super mom of two beautiful kids, mm -hmm. a teenager and a pre-teenager. Uh, no, no, pre-teen pre and, yeah, pre and nine. And nine, yeah. okay, pre-teen and nine. Um, super excited to welcome her. She is a fashionable attorney. That's what I call her. <laughs> a free spirit, definitely a very much of a liberal thinker. And I'm so happy to have you. Thank you. I'm so glad I we're feel able so to special sit down. that you invited me. Yay! Looking forward to it. Yeah, I think that you're one of those women we see, and we're like, we aspire to be like her. Like, look at look at her fashion sense. Look okay. at what she has on. The interview is over. <laughs> that's that's all. That's all I want people to know. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my goodness. So let's dive in. Yeah. Because this time goes by really fast. Sure. So we are going to touch on a couple things. We're gonna to touch on your career. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna to touch on the kids, of course, and we're gonna to touch on you. Okay. Right? Yeah. And let's start uh, at your upbringing. So mm -hmm. you are, you've had a family island upbringing, and yes. I don't think many people may know that. No. Which is fine. Which no, is fine. a lot of people don't. I think a lot of people, when they see me around, they're like, oh, she's from Trinidad or some really? of the other Caribbean, West, West Indian islands. Yeah. Um, but no, I was born and raised in Eleuthera. Um, well, I was born in Nassau, then moved yeah. to Eleuthera when I was like a week. Um, yeah. And yeah, I was in Eleuthera until I was 15. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, completed high school in Eleuthera. Then I was at boarding school and then various other degrees. Right. And then moved back, to, moved to Nassau in 2001. Wow. Yeah, but Eleuthera is still my home. Everybody knows me, knows know. me, knows that I'm a Eleuthera gal. Um, and yeah, that's, knows that's always name. going to be. Bacchus? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So that's legacy. Yes. I'm big on that. Yes. Like, I believe you should create a legacy for Definitely. your kids. Or continue the legacy. Definitely. Right? And um, if I can just say, how it's, I, I think it's, um, I like to tell people how, I guess, my family, how